You're a liar, a cheater, a sinner, and a homosexual. Hey everybody, it's me, Ren Rai, and today we're going to be talking about the bizarre Drag Race mobile game, Root Balls Drag Race Superstar. This game has always been a big question mark for me, even as a Drag Race fan. I've always known that the game has existed. I mean, with the way that they market it, how could you not? Did you know Root Balls Drag Race has an official mobile game? Did you know Root Balls Drag Race has an official mobile game? Did you know that Root Balls Drag Race has an official mobile game? Did you know Root Balls Drag Race has a mobile game? But I never really had any interest in playing it. But that changed this week when I took a deep dive headfirst into the game and its surprisingly active community. So sit back, relax, and let me take you on a journey through the surprisingly addictive world that is RuPaul's Drag Race Superstar. Start your engines and join me in the new mobile game, RuPaul's Drag Race Superstar. The game came out in 2021 and it was marketed as this opportunity for fans to live out their wildest dreams of being on the show, creating their own drag personas, styling their own outfits, and meeting the one and only fracker himself, RuPaul. Though the game released in October 2021 to generally positive reviews, it was largely criticized for the amount of game-breaking glitches and bugs which were in the game. But despite this, the game was actually able to create a fan base for itself, and that fan base is still pretty active today. So if the fan base is pretty active and people keep coming back to this game, the gameplay must be pretty good, right? Right? So the game begins with this beautiful screen right here. Read the print, hunty. Please confirm that you have read and accepted the terms of use and privacy policy, occur. So after this little intro, you're brought to the avatar editor where you get to create your own character out of drag. You can change anything from your skin tone to your hair to your body type. So naturally, I decided to create an original character and let my creativity roam free. And we ended up with this beautiful character right here. And if you'd like to know her name, uh, let me just give a proper introduction to her. Everybody, welcome to the stage. Lisa Gama looks like shit. I'll have you know her name is Latin for this game looks like shit. It was actually difficult to get this name through their sensor system. It kept telling me that it was too risque. And I was like, oh, they don't want me to put shit in my name. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever, I'll change it. So then I took it out and tried to get through it again. And I still was not allowed, which made me realize that they didn't have a problem with me saying shit, but they had a problem with me putting gay in my name. Wow, I can't say gay in this very homosexual game. Like, do you remember the way that they phrased the terms and conditions? The call is coming from inside the house. Anyway, I realized that if you just put a bunch of diacritics over the letters, that it gets through their systems fine. So if anyone wants to have like a really profane name on this app, just put a fucking umlaut over something and then you're fine. So after creating your character, you're then told to get into rich girl realness drag. And then when you're ready to walk the runway, RuPaul tells you to hit the slay button. He said it, he said the meme. So I put on the worst outfit that I can possibly find to try and fail this tutorial. And then I hit that motherfucking slay button so goddamn hard. And even dressing like shit, I still won against this Katika queen. And from that performance, we can gather that Visa Gama looks like shit is a fashion queen. Violet Chachki, never heard of her. Miss Fame, more like Miss Lame. <laughs> So after that, we get brought to the workroom and we get hit with overstimulation and we're introduced to one of the main mechanics of the game, which is called work. And I'm just going to say this real quick. Work is the stupidest fucking name. <laughs> because it's just one word and not like work points or something that would have made more sense, you end up with stupid fucking conversations like this. Congratulations, your sewing workstation made work. Let's see you collect it. Spend work to increase workstation's XP and you'll earn even more work. Like just say work points. It sounds so much easier and it would sound so much better in that sentence. Now we are in the workroom from Drag Race, like a blank liminal void of a workroom. And sadly, this is where the game becomes a slog. And by a bit of a slog, I mean a total slog. Cause this is just where the game turns into Farmville. <laughs> in the workroom, the player's main goal is to set up as many workstations as possible to maximize Maximize the amount of work they can collect. You can make a sewing station, a wig station, a padding station, every type of station you can imagine, but they pretty much all function the exact same. They all accrue work over time, and it's up to the player to wait around until all of their stations gather enough work that they unlock the next maxi challenge. But before we get into the maxi challenges, you may be asking, but what if I don't wanna wait four hours for work to build up? And that's a great question because if you don't wanna wait, you can just buy gems, one of the three main currencies in this freaking game. And I know that we're just getting into it, but this game is not that big. It does not need 
need three currencies. Whole fucking countries only have one currency. Okay, so let's do a quick rundown of the currencies, a speed run. There are three currencies. The first one is gems. Gems can be used to skip time so you don't have to wait for your work to build up. You can just get it automatically. They substitute missing resources to buy workstation and pit crew upgrades. Don't worry, we'll get to the pit crew. It's the whole thing, it's gonna happen later. Hi, this is editing me. I forgot to talk about the pit crew even though I said I would, so we'll go through it now. So the pit crew are unlockable characters which you can assign to different workstations in the workroom and the pit crew will increase the productivity of that workstation. You can assign two pit crew to each station at a time. And there's also rare types of pit crew that you can get which have special perks which affect the productivity of the whole room. Though I was never able to get any of these characters because they're locked behind time limited events. And I'm also just not good at the game, so. <laughs> Also, a little fun detail about the pit crew, which I really liked, is that they have little bios with like likes and dislikes and stuff. And I thought this was a really nice detail to add, and I felt like it gave the game much needed personality. You can use gems to buy chests in the in-game store, and you can also use them to refresh the fashion store. Our second currency is lipsticks. Lipsticks can be used to buy permanent upgrades for the workstations and also for the pit crew. And apparently you can use them to exchange cards in the store, but cards are basically like a fourth currency. They're not as big of a thing as these three, so we're not gonna go through it in like extreme detail, but they do exist, and you just need them to buy certain things, basically. It's basically just like work. It's basically another version of work, but it's cards. I don't know why they're cards. I don't know what that has to do with Drag Race. Then our third currency, we have Rue Dollars. Rue Dollars can be used to buy clothing in the fashion store and to buy upgrades for existing clothing that you already have. Now you can gain all of these currencies in the game. You don't have to buy them from the store. The further that you get into the game, the harder it is to actually make any progress without buying some of these currencies. But also they have an option for the poor people out there. If you don't have money to trade to get supplies you need, you can just trade years of your life watching ads. So I obviously chose that option and I had to watch like this shitty five minute ad of like this medieval baby who was like adopted and there was another one which wasn't adopted. It was, a, it was a whole thing. It was like a whole narrative in this five fucking minute ad. And then when I got my work at the end of it, I was given the option to watch more ads, uh, which I obviously did. But then I got the same fucking five minute ad, so I shut down the app and I deleted it from my phone. So I guess that that's a fun mechanic. <laughs> so once you've earned enough points, you unlock a maxi challenge. Now, unlike the show, maxi challenges are just runways. There's no comedy challenges, no acting, no girl group, no dancing, nothing like that. And I'm assuming that they did this to keep the main focus of the game on fashion. I guess they really wanted this app to be like the gay version of Stardoll. Well, I guess Stardoll is the gay version of Stardoll. <laughs> But most importantly, I think that the main reason that they only have fashion runway challenges in this game is because if they were to shift focus from fashion to anything else, it would take away their main way of making money, which is making people want to buy stuff in their in-game shops. And if people don't need to buy clothing items in the store for like an acting challenge or for, you know, a girl group challenge, they're not going to. And that means that the developers are going to make like 4 million a year instead of like 5 million, <laughs> which would be really sad for them. So by limiting the scope to just fashion and focusing on fashion so much, it makes people want to go into the shops and buy stuff so they can have cool outfits and do well in the game. But because every single maxi challenge it's just a runway. It makes every single maxi challenge feel the exact same. Like you're basically doing the exact same thing over and over and over. You're just given a runway prompt and then you just have to choose items of clothing which have the tag that correlates to that runway prompt. So if the runway theme is basic, you have to choose clothing with the basic tag. If the theme is glitz, then you have to wear clothing with the glitz tag. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but also very boring because I find that this tag system basically kills and murders any type of creativity which you once might have had because it just becomes a case of just choosing the items which have the same tag as the runway prompt. There's absolutely no creativity that goes into it. To give them credit, I think that they did recognize this flaw in their gameplay. So in mini challenges, when you have to do the runway, there aren't any tag requirements, so you can wear whatever you want, but there is still a defined scoring system so you can't really wear whatever you want because you're still leaning into the scoring system in order to do well. So it's basically the exact same thing as having tags. Now you may be asking, what if I was doing a maxi challenge and it required me to have an item of clothing with a specific tag, but I didn't have any items of clothing with that tag? That's a great question and you probably guessed it, but that is where the fashion store comes in. You can buy clothing here, but the available items changes every single day. So it gives you an incentive to come back and see what's new. So once you've chosen an outfit with the required tags for the runway, you can go out 
and get judged. You're then pitted against a bot queen, and whoever has the best clothing items with the highest scores wins. Now these Agami look shit was slaying bitches left and right, but that was because I was in the early stages of the game. Cause when our girl went onto the online daily challenges, she got fucking slaughtered. Daily and weekly challenges are online runways which allow everyone, no matter their experience level, to go against each other. And as you can imagine for these Agami look shit, that did not bode well for her. Now I didn't land anywhere near the leaderboard for this, but that's just because my fashion sense is too forward thinking. Maybe in 20 years time they'll catch up. But from what I've read, these leaderboards are very competitive. When browsing through the subreddit for this game, I stumbled upon a post where a user celebrates getting third place in one of the game's leaderboards, and in order to achieve this, this person had to spend around $500 to $600 on in-game currencies. That being said, there is a poll on the subreddit which shows that most people who play the game don't spend any real life money on it, instead opting for the grind of the workroom. And in the subreddit, it does seem like this idea of whether this game is pay to win or not is still very much up for debate, with it being pretty common to see both users saying that not being able to win is just a skill issue, while others say it's a microtransactions issue. Though I'm kind of obsessed with this one user who made this big goodbye speech two months ago being like, hope you can keep enjoying the game even though it's clearly pay to win, unlike me. And then I checked their profile to see their last interaction with the subreddit, and it was 10 hours ago. <laughs> Speaking of, the RuPaul's Drag Race Superstar Reddit seems to be the main hub for players of the game. Most posts are centered around people showing off their outfits or sharing their achievements, or like most gaming subreddits complaining about the devs and glitches in the game, and then other people post posts complaining about the people complaining about the devs and glitches. Also I find it funny that the users of this subreddit just have an obsession with the devs. Devs please, there's a chin discoloration and a lopsidedness. Devs if you're here, please fix these eyes. They are so beautiful, but every Every time I put them on, this is what I see. And also my favorite part about the subreddit and their obsession with the devs is that they have this kind of dev conspiracy where people believe that loads of the devs go on undercover reddit accounts and try and post things to try and sway the fans opinions about certain aspects of the game. So now it's just led to this kind of dev McCarthyism where people just randomly accuse others of being devs in disguise for complimenting the game. Someone called me a developer on here because I disagreed with their opinion and my name has the letters D-E-V in it. That's hilarious. Whenever I see someone defending the greediest game devs over loyal playing, sometimes paying gamers, I always assume they're a dev. Okay, okay, but not me, okay? I'm just a big fan of the game, lol. Downvote. And I think that the reason why this game still has a pretty active fan base is because of the game's seasons. You see, the advertising that they do for every new season in this game is the reason why I know this game exists. Because when a new season for this game drops, they market the fucking shit out of it. So if you don't know, seasons are time-related events in the game, which introduce new clothing, new weekly events, and most importantly, they introduce a queen from the show into the game. That's right, you can see all of your favorite queens in their cartoon glory. You can earn their iconic looks from the show. You can compete in weekly challenges themed around them. But don't wait too long though, because seasons only last a month. And once that month is over, well, you can say goodbye to your hopes and dreams of ever dressing like Jessica Wilde. There's been 27 seasons so far, with Jessica Wilde being the current one at the time of filming, which you may already know uh, if you've seen Jessica Wilde's Instagram. She's been posting about it on there. And it's all over the RuPaul's Drag Race Superstar Twitter. I mean, they even tagged Jessica in a Twitter post. Wait, that's not Jessica. Jessica Wilde. Why did they tag some random woman called Jessica? This poor woman. Honestly, it's a pretty smart way to keep people coming back to your game. Each new month, you're promised that your favorite queens are going to be joining the game. You'll have the ability to unlock all of their iconic outfits from the show. And it's a limited time offer, so there's no time to waste. You should play the game now. And it's marketed all over the fucking queens' social media, so you can't escape it. Like I said before, I had no interest in this game before making this video. And even I could tell you some of the queens who were included in previous seasons just through sheer osmosis of existing on the internet. So that's the RuPaul's Drag Race Superstar app. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And most people who watch me aren't even subscribed, so you could totally subscribe and get new amazing videos every single week. I have a Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and a Patreon. If you want to support me on any of those platforms, please do. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you so much to all my patrons, especially these people who I'm just about to say the names of right now. Mikey3991, Planet Daniel, Jim Jimmy James Bradshaw, Nico Montano, Ravi Kasari, Eve, Dip, Oliver Wyatt, Amelia Garange, Giovanni Vacari, Yoon Wyatt, Biko Pop, Matt F, and Tone. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And thank you to all the other names that are flowing across the screen right now. Every single one of you I appreciate.